Welcome back to Retro Wednesday at the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the Bionic 6 entire toy line from LJN. It's one of my favorite toy lines, and it's fun to collect because there's not much to it. There's not much to get. There's 13 figures, there's a few vehicles, and a playset. And with that, it's one of my favorites. I made a lot of videos about it, but it's kind of choppy. They're kind of compartmentalized, and some of them are about the accessories, some of them are about the playset, some of them about the vehicles. This is going to be the entire toy line. I'm going to go through it all. I'm going to try to make it quick and concise, but still have pretty much everything in there for an entire toy line review, because those are some of my favorite reviews, and I really feel like it's this toy line needs the proper treatment. And today's the day, so we're going to talk about Bionic 6, the entire toy line from LJN, coming up. All right, starting out with Jack, the figure itself is pretty cool looking. It is made of die cast metal, clear plastic, painted, and it is an interesting looking figure. Now the downside to them, of course, is that they cannot move their arms. They don't have the articulation. They're, they do not have the uh, bicep swivel to be able to do the power on. You can do that with your Joes, but you can't do this. So Bionics on is not going to happen for them, and that's one huge fail in the toy line. But they're cool looking figures, especially if you have them with decent paint on them. But they are slightly smaller, slightly smaller than a G.I. Joe figure and a Star Wars figure. But they are relatively in the same scale. Here he is on his card back, and the cards are smaller than the Star Wars card back. So it sits in one of the star cases a little bit lower, and it looks like this. Every one of them has everything on the back, every figure on the back which makes me think that they didn't have multiple waves, but maybe they did. Maybe one half came in one, half came in the other, but I really can't understand why some are more scarce than others. I mean, I understand this one because everybody wants a leader one. No, a Jack <laughs> father one, bionic one. And there it is. Let's get on to the next one. I, as for the accessories, he has this backpack. He has this snorkeling thing he's got on his head. And then he's got this kind of weird looking gun, but lots of fun. Let's get into the next one. Here we are with Mother 1, this is her card back. She does not want to stand on her own, so I'm going to have to just move that card back out of the way. But that's how she comes. And Mother 1 fell over. I was trying to figure out a way to rig that stand. So she's a pretty cool looking figure too. She does have the combination of metal and clear plastic and all of that fun stuff. And an interesting figure, she has this, what does look like Meg's, it should have been for Meg accessory, but I, they put it on her. Doesn't seem like it fits her at all. It has nothing to do with it, but she does look pretty good. And she is on a female buck, so she's skinnier and thinner than what we got with the Jack. But most of them are about the same height. The only, only like two of them that are significantly taller. But she looks good, what you would think for a mother one on a female buck and got the paint. And so these designs are so weird because she has like this yellow on this leg and then red on that leg. Just so 80s. We're getting into the Meg figure, and as I, I remember, I, I had a hard time finding a Meg as a kid. I finally did, and it was just so cool to have the character on the show. As you can see, the paint is perfect on a sealed one, and then you've got some chips and stuff on a loose one. Uh, this might not even be my best loose one, but it's the one I grabbed, and she does look pretty cool. Problem is, I don't know what her accessory is, like a waist thing. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but... Uh, I don't know if they gave that to Mother One, even what she would do with it. So the accessories all really do suck on her, but she's got the blue and the yellow and the clear blue and some red paint and kind of cool. Would love to see what a modern iteration of these would look like. I mean, it would look so awesome if we can get a modern iteration of these figures. Here we go with Eric or Sport One. That's his card bag. That's what it looks like. And he comes with a baseball bat and a glove. So, really didn't think much about the accessories, and he did use his bat in a couple of episodes, but he was in a more sports than baseball, wasn't he? And was baseball is only sport, but a cool looking figure overall. He has his sports jacket. I do like the tampo graph of the Bionic 6 I have on each one of these, and some tampo graphs come out better than others. And does feel like he has his clear in his arms a little bit more. I don't think they all have clear in the arms. But that could be an issue down the road with some of this. The clear plastic can cause breakage, and I've noticed that with a couple of them. But anyhow, there he is and his accessories. 
Eh, they're okay. He's a cool figure, though. So we have Bungie, Unpunched. Good looking figure. And this was one of my favorites to get. Like, when I got him, I was so excited because another one, hard to track down. And it's just so interesting how they, they have a similar design, but the color schemes are different and the face sculpts are different. And his weapon is something I've never seen him use, but uh, because he is Karate One Bungie, of course he's going to use Karate in there. Looks uh, really cool. Actually, it's almost like a very bland figure compared to the rest of them. But the fact that he does Karate, oh yeah, he was one of my favorites. He got played with a lot, definitely. Next up we have JD or IQ, which is the rarest of them all to get complete. The figure himself's not rare, it's just getting him complete that's rare. And so it starts to make me think, getting him carded, he's probably the most expensive one carded. And here's what I think happens. Somewhere along the line, collectors figured out that it's really hard to find these weapons and accessories. So I think people started buying them to just have a complete loose set, having to open up a JD and take them out of there. And that's probably why these figures are hard to find carded. And still, to this day, these pieces are hard to get. It's a challenge. Like I had my hat and one of these saved from childhood. Getting the other one, it took me three years to find one. So it's a challenge, but he's cool looking anyway. I don't know what the whole cowboy hat thing's about, but it's a, a cool looking figure. And there went one of his pieces falling off. So hard to keep those on. And then here he is in the back. He's got a scarf. But yeah, interesting. He does carry on that nice motif of die cast paint and some some clear translucent plastic my biggest problem with him is just getting these things to stay on I, it might take me forever uh i'll get back to it he i think he does actually have a spot where this is supposed to plug into but anyway i'm gonna get back to trying to put this back together and then we'll look at the next one all right so here's scarab and that's how it looks like on his card back and Dr. Scarab, he is shorter than I feel like he should be, but aside from that, he does kind of represent the character. Okay, uh, face, color of his face and skin tone probably doesn't match as well as it should, but he doesn't do much. He does come with this wrench that I never see him use or clamp, priors. Uh, I think somebody actually said that it's an electrical tool. It is an electrical tool, but anyhow, there he is with his tool belt. Now he does carry it around a stethoscope and he's, all of these, okay. So all of these are going to have clear this uh, Hell Scarab, Hell Scarab kind of symbol on their chest. And although <laughs> Scarab, he, he has the same one, but he hells himself, I guess. But anyhow, he's short, heavy, lots of die casts in him, but <laughs> goofy looking dude overall. Still fun to see him floating around his throne. So we have Chopper and Chopper is... Another one that's kind of hard to get. Probably the bad guys between Chopper and Clunk, the two hardest to find. Track down. Still no rhyme or reason. Don't know if maybe they were a Wave 2. I don't really have that information. And I, as a kid, you just don't know. You just know what they're stocking on the shelf when you show up. And you can only afford to buy like two of them. So you get the two that you wanted the most and needed the most. But it was almost never Chopper. That's what I remember. Now, he is a cool looking dude. And in the show, he actually had a chain. I don't know why they didn't pack him with the chain. They just have a chain on here. And, and maybe that has something to do with the animators just kind of made up something as they went. He does have this uh, missile on the back that's articulated and goes up. Mine is a little bit bent on that, but I don't know if that's a common issue or anything. But overall, pretty cool looking figure. Hell Scarab, he's got his glasses and uh, his backpack. He's I kind of like the fact that all these figures have like their own color scheme. He's not, they're not all the same color. They're not all wearing the same uniform. He's got sort of a brown type of shirt and matches to the lower down there i'm sure that has to do with just paint app money and all that but still cool looking figure maybe not a whole lot of fun wish he had a chain we go with mechanic and it is mind-boggling absolutely mind-boggling the mechanic only comes with a belt that makes no sense whatsoever he's very simple and plain the most common figure by far if you need to get a mechanic it's easy to get a mechanic probably only five bucks plus shipping or something but Still, he played a big role. He's a good-sized figure. He's someone that could also be like background thugs or something if you want to display with other figures. He does come with that translucent green piece there. This one is giving me some trouble standing. But, yeah, Mechanic is a pretty good figure overall. Uh, matches the character pretty much exactly like you'd expect. But even in the, even in the 
artwork, they show him holding a hammer or something. I mean, I figured he should have had at least one other accessory. But I'm glad they didn't because you'd be chasing down yet another accessory here in 2024. All right, next we get into Madamo, which is another female character. So three female characters in this line of 12, technically 13 figures. Kind of cool, kind of fun getting up here. That's the card back. It looks good. She looks good. She's a pretty common, easy figure to get, probably with some paint wear and stuff. And some, this one shows some discoloration on her. But it, it, it's interesting how she looks with her glasses. Would have been nice if they would have done some eyes on her, but they didn't. So she's eyeless. She does have that green translucent piece, some yellow on there. And then on the back, I, I always thought this backpack was kind of like something like uh, what she's got going on with maybe she's got gas in there. I always said it's like she's got poisonous gas, darling. And then she comes with this gun, which actually holds really well. She holds it really well. It's kind of interesting, cool looking. That's her gun. Is that her gun? Yep, that's her gun. And fun stuff for her. But another thing is I'm starting to notice, and I probably should talk about it, is that these figures, maybe it's the die cast construction. I'm not sure what it is. They get loose over time. But most of them have a screw in the back. You can just tighten some stuff up and it could probably help. Or you can open them up and do some polish inside there. Let it all dry and then put it back together. And you should have it tightened up. Good old transformer tricks on some Bionic 6 if you need to. Here we go with Glove. And I gotta say, he's probably the coolest character of all of them. He's People will kind of compare him to Starscream from Transformers. As he's the sort of second in command kind of guy that's always wanting to overthrow the boss. I don't think he's so much that. I mean, sometimes he is. I think it's more that he just doesn't believe in the boss or he's uh, got a vote of no confidence in Scarab's plans for the most part. But he was cool. And this one, he actually got the right accessories. I mean, his accessory was correct. He did get his glove. And that is, that is just so awesome. And for me to actually get a glove when I was a kid and for his glove to work and all of that uh, to, to fit on him and it just looks good. I was so ecstatic, but also he looks cool. He's got these, it's like uh, ammo belts around him, and he's got different color variation to him. Green boots, green hat. Just always thought he was a cool looking figure, and he's a cool looking character. Definitely one I'd want them to remake. I mean, if they did a reboot, Glove should be one of the first ones, because he is just really cool. Plus, it works out for the whole metrics, because the more popular, he's a more popular common figure. He's a common figure, most people have him. And most people want to buy a modern iteration. Anyway, that's Glove, one of the coolest ones. Lastly, we've got Clunk. Clunk is probably one of the harder ones to get, probably top three hardest ones to get. And as you can see, there he is. He is significantly shorter than he should be. He should be way taller than this, and he doesn't really match the art. I was so disappointed as a kid when I got him, but... I had a good imagination, so I made up the difference, but it was always a disappointment. You know, we as kids weren't as stupid as the adults thought we were, but uh, anyhow, here is his kind of glove, gun kind of thing, and uh, this must be faded, because that one looks super yellow, and this is a little bit faded, because uh, it's used, and it's out there. But he's another one, hard to get, probably, I, I don't know, in my mind, I think he is the hardest one to get, but over the last few years, I've seen him pop up so many times that... Uh, other ones just didn't pop as, as much, making me think that he's still kind of hard to get. I, it makes me still wonder if there was a wave too, but he's kind of like a weird looking cement looking monster. I don't even know how to explain it, but he looks cool and he's got all these different colors with him, but I would love them to remake it. If somebody just came out with a good one to put on your shelf, like a custom or someone made one that was... Uh, for a third party kind of deal, it would be so awesome because nothing matches. His head doesn't even match, doesn't look right. Nothing really looks right. Uh, he's supposed to have this blue piece here. <clears throat> Very disappointing figure when I was a kid. Even though I like and I'm happy to have it, and I like that I have it, it's still disappointing. And getting into Fluffy, yes, I do have a carded one, but it's really in rough shape, so it's not gonna do anyone any good to look at. It kinda does a disservice. But this is another one that is a, it's cool, but he doesn't match the cartoons so much. But in my mind, I always think of him as a toy because I spent so much time with a toy. But I wish he would have had hands, something cool like hands. He doesn't have much articulation, just a little bit in the legs and the shoulders. And the head almost moves a little bit. Maybe some waist? Nope, no waist articulation. So disappointing on the waist articulation. Disappointing on the fact that the hands are not hands. But you can turn these around for whatever reason and have them post like this. But yeah, Fluffy, 
could have they could have done better with them, but still, it's one of those things that I had this. I I enjoyed it when I was a kid, so I do have some nostalgia for it, and I'm happy to have the figure in my collection. This is fluffy, and another one that would really be awesome to get a modern iteration. All right, here's the dirt bike. It was one of the two smaller vehicles that they came with, and it is a pretty interesting little one. I remember when I first picked my first one up, and of course it was incomplete, missing parts, and all that kind of stuff. And I thought it was kind of a silly, boring toy, but I finally picked one up in the package. And when I picked one up in the package, that's why I just didn't need a complete one loose. So finding a complete one loose was hard after that. But uh, this still is one of those that is very fragile. There's a lot of breakage points to it, and it does show Meg on there, but I got Bunji, Karate One on there. Okay, so it does come with these vac metalized pieces here in the back, and that goes up and down. And it kind of depends on, I think that's for interactivity with the mules van and then it it looks kind of cool it looks like a dirt bike but it has this one action feature when you push this button it does all this and uh, so this pops out these front guns pop out and then we have the rear it sort of turns into a small three-wheeler it is more stable to stand or sit like this and display like this and more fun uh, but good luck well not good luck it's good for that because a lot of times this mechanism is broken and so that's the only way it's going to hold and it's just weird like that. But it's kind of a fun little motorcycle. It's okay. It's not the greatest thing that they made. In fact, it's my least favorite of all the vehicles. I kind of like the quad a little bit more. All right, so here we go with the quad runner. It is my favorite of the small vehicles and I think it's pretty cool. I really liked it as a kid back in the day. It does have some functions and features, and you're going to see a little bit more with it, but uh, I do have the Mother 1 and the Rock 1 on it. So a normal one of these needs to have be not connected. I think I've got them all connected. I'm afraid of breaking them <laughs> by disconnecting them. Here's one on incognito mode, and it looks pretty cool. It's a lot of fun to have this one uh, just riding around. Got his roll bar. You could put the roll bar down to the front if you want to for whatever reason. Uh, and you could have this chilling in the back. But for me, really, it does look cooler when you put this up. So you convert it, put this up, and you can push it down if you want to. And pop this up. Which doesn't This really is work. what the gun looks like on the inside. When you roll it, it should have this little uh, pushing action. This little pumping action. See? The gun pumps. That's fun. That's fun. Good stuff. But this is more fun. I think that it was kind of fun because I've been collecting these for two decades now, I think. And I've, I've got enough that I can have one for each figure. They're not all complete. They're not all in perfect condition. Then maybe the little pumping action doesn't work on one or two of them. But it's still nice to have them for display. All I really care is to have them for display. And it was something that, that I was able to accomplish. And it's a lot of fun. Something like this, it's a whole lot of fun. And just for me, for my shelf, my display, it's great. As for the dirt bike, I, I got some that, I got a long ways to go with the dirt bike if I'm going to get this close to that display. Here are the two laser thrones. They really don't do a whole lot. They are just thrones. They sit there. Scarabs, he was used in the show quite a bit, almost every episode. Definitely something that was necessary. And I was so stoked as a kid to get one of these. This one over here, on the other hand, did not get used in the show. I don't remember seeing it much. I think, I think it was flown by Professor Sharp in his laboratory, just kind of to get around. But with that, it does have retractable wings, which kind of fold up. And that's... Uh, was that fun? Not really. And then it, all the laser stuff. I really don't get the interactivity with the lasers going. But I can get one over here that works... I don't know, is that what it's supposed to do? I really don't know what it's supposed to do. I don't even care. I'm not in for that function at all, but it seems to me like either mine are messed up <laughs> or I don't really understand how it's supposed to work and play. But that, there it is. It's kind of like a laser tag game, but a laser tag game that kind of sucks. For the Mules Van, which is quite interesting because it has interactivity for two of the smaller vehicles or the only two smaller vehicles in here is this thing was kind of a challenge to get i remember getting i actually got it uh years ago for like 100 bucks complete and it was funny that even 10 years ago people wanted 200 for this thing complete uh, nowadays i think it goes for a bit more than that 
but still, even back then, 100 was a good deal. And then there's the back of it. Uh, okay, so what do we got going on here? In here, you got this like spinning, which I've always had trouble with this on mine, but it just kind of spins. And then you have these uh, little decals. See, mine doesn't want to hold on very well. That's probably why I got a good deal on it. The front opens up here so you can kind of see what's going on, but you can put in the, uh, I wonder if you have to have it converted down or up. But you can put in the quad runner in here and then you should be able to close that up. So it holds the quad runner, but it does kind of fall out the bottom. It doesn't really hold it so much, but it's just more or less displayed in there. You can still kind of see it's in there. And then this opens up. Now it's got the clear plastic on it, and it has kind of a, uh, a gear system, so it's supposed to open at the exact same time. But these figures really don't do much in here other than just sit in there. Maybe it's a display or something you'd want. But I, it is kind of fun to display it the way it is on the back of the box. Yeah, as you can see, the box does show a figure coming up from the back. We'll show that here in just a second. And we have the quad coming up front. This here is a weather dominator. No, it's just like a kind of a weather thing. Kind of look high techy, even though it's not really all that high techy. And then coming around here to the back, or you open up this the trunk here, and then you have a ramp, and then you're supposed to load your vehicle up into the ramp. And I hope I can pull it off because I've got a broken one here, so that it can get the job done. Now, long story short, you push this up, and then it comes out the top. Gimmick. Uh, maybe it wasn't really worth the inclusion. You're gonna have to have it in the un action mode to work in this and a lot of stuff so that's why i like to put one that's got all these pieces broken off so i don't break any pieces but it's still fun for display and you can get it to stay for display for the most part and you can have it hit the box and look like the box and it's a lot of fun but past that i mean as a kid i knew of somebody i don't think i had one of these but i knew someone that had it and when i saw it at first it seemed cool but after a little bit i was like yeah that's not as cool as i thought it was Here's the secret laboratory, Professor Sharp's secret laboratory, the Bionic 6 laboratory. So this is the only place that the toy line, and it is interesting. It's got some interesting aspects to it, things I like about it, things that make it seem kind of skimpy in a way, but it's different than any other place that I've ever seen because of the design. Because we do have this front entryway, so that's one kind of pedestal off of the main center, and then we have these other ends over here. And so that's kind of fun, kind of cool, and then, with this place that if you have a rubber band on it, which I have not, but these will pop open so that you can go in to the laboratory. Let's get a closer look at that. And then you can go in there. These guys are supposed to kind of bump and fall over, or maybe they're the ones that are supposed to activate it or the look for it to activate it. But that's, that's kind of a fun feature right there to have an entry door. But it's also something that I would think would be kind of cool for a display diorama and you can have them pedestaled up and standing on them. They don't stand on it very well, but it's still a cool way to maybe just display the Bionic 6. The, the 6. It does have some nice, like, computer-looking decals on the inside of the doors. Uh, that's the way it looks. That's what they're supposed to look like, I guess. And there's some design elements right here, some etched-in design. Going past that, there's this little slide chair. Kind of hard to see, but he slides on that. And then there is the ladder. And we'll get into the color variations of these parts down the road. And then we get into this main unit. Okay, since it's monitored, you can separate it out, and this is what they call the main unit, and starting at the top here, this is what they call the weapon. They just call it the weapon. And there's also a special weapon, special spinning weapon, but this here, it comes in two parts, and it's almost impossible to keep it straight like this. I'm not sure why they designed it like this, and what's supposed to happen, but you have some uh, clear plastic, and you have this, some sort of spinning kind of thing in there, and this is what it's supposed to do. It really, to me, I always looked at it as a telescope, where you're supposed to have your figures look through here as a telescope, but I don't really know. And then we have this, which turns, and it's kind of fun. Now this whole unit here is kind of assembled, like so. And then you put it on top of this, and that's how it spins. And uh, I did have some question, like the right way to assemble it, but after a while it kind of all made sense. This this is a, a bit of a challenging playset for things to actually make sense. And then getting down here, I mean, instructions make it a lot easier. When you get down here, open this up and you can see that we have some decals and stickers and stuff going on right here so it's a whole lot of fun and then on the other side uh, we have 
more stickers and decals and stuff that's a lot of fun and then this is blue this is kind of a blue clear or this is a red clear transparent and they do use a lot of clear plastic in this playset, so that makes it kind of fun kind of cool then we have what they call the weapon unit and this weapon unit is kind of an interesting part here and yeah i probably should have some more figures interacting with this playset because but it's they'll fall over as i move it around but a little bit on the dusty side uh, they call this the spinning weapon, which it does spin, like so. And then on the inside here, we have doors where you... I look at this as a jail cell. That's the way I see it. It's kind of cool how they kind of close up like that. And so you can put a figure in there into the jail cell if you like. Here we go, looking at glove in the jail cell. I don't know, the camera's probably not going to pick it up as well, but there's glove in the jail cell. That's kind of fun. Spinning weapon, platform doesn't really do a whole lot but to me i think it's just a way to display your figures probably then we have what we call the time capsule and this is another clear piece right here it also comes with two guns which i'm so afraid of breaking them and it does a couple of things there's the guns for lookout post and they do have some stickers and decals on the back which mine is coming off here on that decal now with this he can go up to this next level and then when you get him up here you kind of put it into lock it into place a bit which i think you can lock it in that way so they can walk out which would make sense and then up here they got a couple of things going on that you can do and he can go interact with the rest of the playset or what he can do over here i mean he, he's got a, a satellite or a flag what do they even call that it is a turning screen that's what it is a turning screen and then we have kind of a lookout tower thing going on over here and so this is can you can put it either way if you want to you can have it facing either way be fun, fun stuff, good stuff. Load it up with figures. It would be a good way to display your figures. But the, the playset itself lacks a lot of interactivity with the vehicles, which they did a great job with the mules van. The interactivity with the mules van was good, but with this. But we're going to get into, real quick, the color variations. All right, so this was something that really I was obsessed with for a while. and It was, it was fun and exciting to see that there were color variations in this. And it's already a rare playset, and I got my hands on some of these. But I'm going to go through this real quick. In my actual review of this, I spent way too much time on it. So anything that is clear blue or solid blue was also made in clear red or solid red. And they were just scrambled up. I have no rhyme. I don't see any rhyme or reason why they did it or how they did it other than just make it fun. And with that, you can see that we have the blue front, red front, red back, red back. And then you can see all the color variations on these. And obviously, the guns have different colors. Uh, they were alternated in different colors. So was the turning screen also let's get into each module and show that the other thing about this playset with the color variations if it's black yellow or white then they're the same on both sets so we see red here blue here red here blue here blue here red here kind of a breakup in color mix kind of fun to look at same thing right here oddly enough this is red on everyone too that's weird it was made of a different material but where it's blue it's red where it's red it's blue where it's blue it's red and where it's red it's blue and blue it's red so, funny little mix-up that they did with this playset, but a lot of fun. Also, these pieces here, and I don't think I grabbed a blue one of these. The ladder is blue and red, also. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video and the entire look at the entire line of Bionic 6. One more time, I probably will not be getting these out in this capacity ever again for a video, but I'll probably be getting them out for bits and pieces for reasons hopefully we see a modern take on these a modern iteration one day hopefully there's enough love for it but really cool figures really cool toy lane and a lot of fun but let me know what you think in the comments below like and subscribe and tidy your hanger out I was good. It ain't me, Willie. Destroy my cyprons, Willie. When I'm through with you five worthless examples of mankind, Dr. Amadeus Sharp and Bionic One will wish I'd never been born. Sure. Yeah.